Welcome to Take Another Five, your weekly podcast on a bit of this and a bit of that. Hosted by Donna J. Jodham. Hey there, it's Donna Jill Jodham, and welcome to my podcast, my weekly podcast, Take Another Five. Happy to be here with you for yet another week, and we hope that you are enjoying this as much as we are enjoying bringing it to you. We want to thank you for all of your feedback, because it's only with you and through you that we could continue to do what we do. I live in Toronto, Canada, and I'm an author, blogger, editor, writer, entrepreneur, and law student, and I thoroughly enjoy doing what I do, that is being with you every week and listening to your feedback and sending you feedback. For this week, we'd like to start by asking you this question. What is your favorite vegetable? I know a while back we asked you what was your favorite fruit. Now it's time to ask you what is your favorite vegetable? Carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, eggplant, zucchini, cucumber. I'll even lump tomatoes in there. And I'll go as far as lumping lettuce as well. Which is it? I know for kids they don't really like... um, vegetables, but that's okay. All right. Let's describe to you what you're going to hear this week in Kitchen, sorry, in our podcast, Take Another Five. First of all, we're going to give you the wrap-up to last week's mystery. Then we're going to go right into Kitchen Corner and cook with you. Next, we'll be Take Another Five with Technology. Then it will be the five minutes mystery moment segment. Then it will be in the end zone with the entrepreneur. And finally, it will be staying ahead of bullies and scams. Then we'll go to our wrap up where we'll give you some additional facts to help you solve this week's mystery. But But before we can go on to all of this, let's first deal with last week's mystery, which was called the Million Dollar Mansion. And we'll tell you who did it. And we hope that you have been successful in determining who did it. These are all about problem solving, and they are must-reads if you like solving problems. All right, then. Who did it? Who killed Ruthless Will? That private investigator who went around blackmailing everybody? It was Lee Anderson. Lee had come to Ruthless Will's office to see him one day. He was not there, so she convinced his secretary to let her wait. It was while she was there that she hatched the plan. She moved swiftly. She took his Blackberry and proceeded to try and access his computer. Three, she had thrown things around to make it look as if someone had been in his office. And then she had reported the so-called incident to Will's secretary. She had explained that she had tried to shut down the computer. And this is why her fingerprints were on the keyboard. She had used Will's Blackberry to obtain the names of the others. She had texted them with the same message and she had bought a prepaid phone and had texted Rootless Will with messages from said clients. Very smart, eh? Will had left his gate open for his guests. 
and Lee had used her house key to sneak in early. She knew where to find what she wanted. She went to Will's medicine cabinet and had removed the pills. She had then pretended to come through the gate and had found ruthless Will on his back patio. And it was easy for her to have done the rest. She had promised to come back to him for the same sake of their son Lee. She had then set about to mix his drinks and had slipped the pills into them when he was not looking. When Will had become drowsy, she had walked him to the edge of the pool and had had no difficulty pushing him into the pool. Will had succumbed shortly afterwards and then she had went and hid until the others had arrived. She had then made it look as if she was just arriving. The others had arrived almost at the same time and Dr. Kurt Richardson had pulled Ruthless Will's body out of the pool. He had attempted to resuscitate Will, but to no avail. The police was called, investigations took place, and Lee was found guilty. That's it for this week's, or last week's, mystery. You know who killed Ruthless Will now. We also hope that you were able to solve this mystery, but if you didn't, hey, it's not a problem. You can purchase this mystery along with several others from our store at www.donnajodhan.com slash store.html. And if you have any questions at all, please write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca. Now it's time to move on to our first segment for this week's podcast, Take Another Five. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome to my kitchen corner. Hey, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and welcome to our first segment, Kitchen Corner. And it's time to get cooking. You know, so many times we find ourselves in hot spots or in tight corners. When we're looking for recipes that we can make in a hurry, when we are in a time crunch, when we are in an emergency crunch, and we're not sure what to cook. It could be for a party, it could be with the family, it could be for anything. So, this is why Kitchen Corner is so useful for you. And I'd like to thank our good friend Mama Peach for having shared her library of recipes so freely and so generously. Thank you, Mama Peach. And now for this week, it's time to get cooking. And the first category that we're going to draw our recipes from is dips and fondues. This one is called Arizona Black Bean Dip. So here we go. One half can, about 15 ounces, of black beans and drained. One half onion finely finely diced four cloves of garlic minced one tablespoon of ground cumin one teaspoon of ground red pepper four ounces of fresh goat cheese crumbled one tablespoon of thinly sliced green onion divided two tablespoons of chopped fresh cilantro, tortilla, tortilla corn chips, and now you get to work on the, on the ingredients. You combine the beans, the onion, the garlic, the cumin, 
the red, red pepper, cheese, one and a half teaspoons of green onion and cilantro in a crock pot. And then it's a little dipper warmer. Cover it, heat for 45 minutes or until the cheese is melted, stirring in occasionally. Now then you garnish with the remaining one half teaspoon green onion and serve with tortilla chips. Here is a tip for you. For a quicker preparation, place ingredients in a microwave safe bowl. Cover with plastic wrap and poke a quick poke. Sorry, let me start again. Um, let's start from here. In a microwave safe bowl, cover with plastic wrap and poke a fork through the plastic to allow for steam venting. Okay? Microwave on high for one to one and a half to two minutes. Okay? Or until the cheese. Okay, let's go again. Microwave on high for one and a half to two minutes or until the cheese is melted and bubbly. Spoon dip into a crock pot little dipper to keep warm for serving. Makes 32 servings. Now I know I wasn't very good this week with this recipe, but hey, if you'd like this recipe plus any others that we have done so far, please write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca and we'd be happy to send you a copy of this recipe and any others that we have been offering to you every week. Right then, here comes recipe two for this week and it's from the cookies and bars category. They're blizzard cookies. One cup of shortening, solid vegetable shortening or margarine will do. One half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of chunky peanut butter, one cup of sugar, one cup of packed brown sugar, two well beaten eggs, two cups of all purpose flour, one 12, 12 ounce package of chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Now you combine the shortening, the salt, the baking soda, the peanut butter, the sugar, and the brown sugar and eggs. Mix thoroughly. Add the flour and mix until almost blended. Stir in chocolate chips and mix. Cover and chill. Drop by teaspoonfuls onto a, an ungreased cookie sheet. Press down tops slightly with back of floured spoon or with your fingertips. Bake in preheated 325 degree oven for 8 minutes or until lightly browned. Remove with a spatula to a cooling rack. Doesn't this sound delicious? I can almost smell it as I am reading it here to you. Okay, that's it for this week for our Kitchen Corner. We hope you enjoyed our two recipes that we have brought to you. Write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca if you'd like to learn more. Now, stay tuned for our next segment. See you on the other side. Time to take another five with technology. 
Hello there again, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and welcome to segment two of our weekly podcast, Take Another Five. And it's time for us to take another five with technology. And we want to start off with introducing you to an app called Meet My Eyes Only Light App. All right, let's dive into this one. And this app may not be for everyone, but for the super organizer, organized person, this may just be the app for you. This app is private and personal and is password protected. You can keep track of all of your credit card info, passwords, bank accounts, plus much, much more. The short name for this app is Mio, M-E-O. The first time you enter this app here is what you will see take place. You will need to enter a password and a password hint Make sure that you store this password in a safe place where you can easily retrieve it if you have forgotten it. Because once the password setup is done, you cannot change it. There are five tabs at the bottom and these are Categories, Search, Recent, Arrow Achievements and Settings. There are Logins, Credit Cards, Financial Accounts, Identity Cards, Memberships, Notes and other options for you to choose from. When you first start, choose the Categories tab and the list of categories appears at the top of the screen. Use the Add button to input your info. Edit fields appear for you to complete and they are properly labeled. When finished, skip down to the Save button which is past the Cancel button. This app is available from the App Store on your iDevice. All right. I'm going to introduce you to a lower tech. We're going to introduce you to a lower technology device for this week, and it's the talking timer. Yes, a talking timer does exist, and the talking timer is a really neat little gadget for someone who is blind, and it can it can come in several formats. That is, as part of a unit that has other talking options, such as a clock or a stopwatch, or it can even come on its own as a standing, a standalone unit. Okay? The very first timer for blind persons that I was aware in, or introduced to was one with braille dots around the dial. It worked very well at the time and I still have one that stands proudly on the top of my fridge. I still love it very much. Today I have talking timers as part of a clock device and as part of another device that also has a stopwatch and it also has a calculator and calendar. I use my talking timer in the same way that a sighted person would. My talking timer also enables me to do countdowns and the reverse, and I can choose the type of voice that talks to me. There are five voices of choice for me to choose from. That's my talking timer, and I hope you go out there and make friends with it. 
Where can you buy this talking timer? Why don't you try Independent Living Aids? That's www.independentlivingaids.com or www.maxiaids.com. Maxi Aids is spelled M A X I A I D S. Try either of those two online shopping facilities and you would be thoroughly delighted if you were to buy a talking timer. That's it for Take Another Five of, uh, for Technology for this week, or Take Another Five with Technology for this week. I'm mixing up my words this week, but hey, we're entitled to do this once in a while, aren't we? Now it's time to go on to segment three, and we'll see you on the other side. But don't forget to send your feedback to info at sterlingcreations.ca if you have any questions or comments. See you on the other side. Donna Jill Jodhan, and welcome to segment three of Take Another Five for this week. Hope you're having lots of fun listening, and now it's time for you to just relax, recharge, sit on your couch or in your living room, or relax on your patio, or even in your kitchen while you're having that extra cup of tea or coffee for the day. We have a mystery for you this week in this segment. And this one is called Fisherman's Feast. This mystery, along with all the others that we bring to you each week, is available at www.donnajodhen.com slash store.html. I have been writing audio mysteries and recording them in my own voice since 2010. And they have been broadcast across the ACB Internet Radio Network, as well as in Toronto at Accessible Media Inc. We have already done two seasons, and a third season has just been done and will be released sometime later this year. You can also have a good listen to our 12 Days of Christmas box set, and This is a box set that was put together about two, three years ago that really brings a lot of joy, energy, limitless imagination, creativity to the listener. It's, you know, this box set is made up of mysteries that are filled with lots and lots of, of Christmas joy. Anyways, it's time for us to get down to business with the Fisherman's Feast for this week. And it's all about an annual holiday vacation that turned into a horrible ending. A perfect day marred by a horrible death. Which close friend could have done it? Why did Marty Mead have to die? The scene of the crime looked something like this. The scene is a popular holiday beach and the early afternoon is a late summer's one. The seabirds are out flying around, guttles are squawking above, and the sea is very calm and is of a jade green color. Very pretty. The sun is very, is comfortably warm, and there is a gentle breeze blowing around. A crowd has formed around the still figure of a man's body. Bystanders are saying that he was killed by a shark's bites. He is clad in a pair of bathing trunks. 
His left arm is badly mangled, and so too is his upper left thigh. His two sons are standing close to the body, along with family friends. The man was pulled from his luxury fishing boat just a short time ago. His sons and friends had brought him ashore, and he had already been dead. What could the motives be for this, or were there motives? Was there a crime committed? Hmm. And who could the suspects be? Brandon? Brent, Nicholas, Josh, or Glenn, a whole host of motives eh? and motive suspects. All right, let's look at the cause of death. Marty Mead had bled to death. One of the shark's bites had severed a major artery. All right, Marty Mead and his two twin teenage sons had come to Fisherman's Feast. And this was a lodge that they had often come to. They had come here for a weekend, and it was supposed to have been a fishing trip. Brandon and Brent Mead were supposed to have been going off soon to university, and they had been joined by Marty's close friends and associates, Nicholas Meadows, Josh Chastain, and Glenn Costano. Marty had wanted to be with his twin sons one more time before they left for university. He had planned this outing some weeks before he had re and he had recently received a double dose of bad news. He had wanted to take some time to think things through. Nicholas Meadows was his trusted friend and lawyer. Josh, Josh Chastain was his business partner and Glenn Costano was his chief financial officer. Marty Mead had been a very successful business tycoon. He had created a skin care and cosmetic empire over the last 30 years. He had been married for 23 years and had three kids, a daughter, Kirsten, 21, enrolled as a business student at a prestigious university, Brandon and Brent, age 19, they were twins. Marty's wife, Kim, had decided to go on a shopping trip to New York with Kirsten while the boys were off on their fishing trip. Nicholas had decided to join Marty and his sons because he was worried about Marty. The boys had invited Josh and Glenn to come along because they knew how much their dad enjoyed their company. It was very unusual for shark attacks to take place in these waters and the previous one had occurred more than 15 years ago. Both Josh and Glenn were experienced fishermen. Several pieces of fish bait had been found in the water close to where the attack had taken place. Marty had recently found out that someone in his company had been embezzling millions and millions of dollars from the company. This had been going on for about the last three years. He had also recently been told that he had inoperable cancer. His doctor has given him six months to live. Only his lawyer, Nicholas Meadows, knew about the embezzlement affair. Marty had not told anyone about his inoperable cancer. 
he had intended to put his house in order upon his return from his fishing trip. Brandon and Brent had both been working with their dad. They were quite savvy with the computer. Brandon was a software Brandon was a software guru, and Brent was a computer repair technician. Josh knew all about the cosmetic industry, where the markets were, and how to find the consumers. Glenn was a financial whiz. Nicholas Meadows specialized in international law and international contracts. This story is filled with intrigue and it's filled with possible suspects who could be very legitimate suspects. But now I'm going to stop here and leave it to you to start thinking as to who could possibly have done this. And we'll be back at the end of this podcast to give you some additional facts that will help you to solve this mystery. And you have one week to think about it. All right, then, as we said, this mystery, along with many others, is available at www.donnajohnhan.com slash store dot html. You can purchase outright or you can register for a subscription, a monthly subscription, a very low fee, and you can download as many times as you want. Good. It's time for our next segment, segment four. And we'll catch you on the other side. In the end zone with the entrepreneur. Hi again, it's Donna Jill Johnhan, and welcome to segment four of Take Another Five. Now we're in the end zone with the entrepreneur, and that's me. I've been an entrepreneur since 1998, and I thoroughly enjoy entrepreneurship, but I'll tell you, there are a lot of bumps along the way for you to be aware of. Entrepreneurship could be enjoyable, but at the same time, it could also be a challenge. And we hope that our weekly tips can help you to deal with some of the bumps along the way. And even if you're not an entrepreneur, you can uh, think about it for the future or even tell your family and friends, those of whom are presently entrepreneurs. And we want to thank you for your feedback. So for this week, we ask this question. What makes entrepreneurship too large? This is often the case when someone makes the mistake to start off too big Overextension of resources and commitment could be one of the major reasons as to why entrepreneurship can become too large. Another reason could be, could be borrowing too much and not considering how to you going to pay back in a timely manner. Another re- reason could be over budgeting. So. You go out there and you make a budget and the budget is just too large. You can't manage the budget because you don't have the resources. Another reason could be that the business plan was not well thought out. So you put together a business plan just as you would do in a frying pan of, of scrambled eggs. You scramble it all together and you hope for the best. And, you know, your business plan is not well thought out and... Lo and behold, your entrepreneurship becomes too large to be to be manageable. Another reason could be having depended too heavily on others, in that you depend too heavily on others to help you out and not enough on your own self to help make things go. All right? So all of these reasons could be why entrepreneurship becomes too large. You know, the one thing is that you've got to manage your promises. And what we mean by this is that do not depend on other people's promises to create your own entrepreneurship. People are always so quick to promise, yes, we'll do this. Yes, we'll do that. Yeah, we can do that. But at the end of the day, when those promises don't come through, 
guess what? You're left with an entrepreneurship that is larger than you ever thought and one that you can't manage. All right, then. If you have any comments or questions, please write to us at info at sterlingcreations.ca and we would be more than happy to send you feedback and provide you with any responses that you're looking for. Right, we're almost to the end of this podcast, but before that, we have to go through our fifth and final segment for this week, and we'll catch you on the other side. Help us beat the bullies and the scams. Hey, it's Donna Jill Jodhan and welcome to segment five of Take Another Five, our final segment for this week. I can't believe we are at or almost at the end of this podcast. But before we let you go for this week, let's get into segment five. And it all has to do with scams and bullies. Staying ahead of scams and bullies. For this week, we want to to make you aware of this following scam. Beware of the insurance salesperson. They can show up at your door or they can call you out of the blue. On the phone, they may call you by your first name or by your last name. And you probably would like to know how they got your first name or last name. They just simply go through, either go through the online phone book or a phone directory. Nothing is, is beyond their reach. They're very smart, I'm telling you this. And you have to be aware of them. You know, so that they would get their your... your first name, last name information from any source. They promise to give you super rates for fantastic packages. Anything ranging from house insurance to disability insurance, medical insurance to life insurance. But now comes the crunch. They can either claim to represent a reputable insurance company or more disastrous, they are an independent agent. If they are an independent agent, simply ignore and turn away. Do it as quickly as you can. If they claim to represent a reputable firm or company, then please, please check out their credentials before you do anything else. Insist on meeting them face-to-face if they call you on the phone and at their company's offices. If they refuse, simply ignore them and hang up quickly. No, don't entertain any of this at all. Just leave it alone and go about your business. Now it's time to talk about building awareness about bullying. Taking examples from our kids is not a bad idea. The other day, a TV reporter asked a little boy who was no more than six years old what he wanted to be when he grew up. And without any hesitation, he said, Batman! For some reason, this little boy's response sure resonated with me. And after a few minutes to ponder, I came up with the following thoughts. Our kids are probably the most honest thinkers, and they almost always often say what is on their minds, be it good or be it bad. Like the rest of us, they all have heroes. And I guess that when this little boy said that he wanted to be Batman, it sparked some glimmers of hope in me. 
His hero is Batman, a character who goes around doing good, a character who is void of any trace of being a bully. And like Batman, there are a number of other similar characters that our kids look up to. So given this, why can we not continue the trend here? and give our kids the opportunity to continue looking up to similar types of heroes as they progress into adulthood and beyond. It is, so, is it so very difficult to do this? I don't think so. And this may be one way for us to deal with bullying. If you'd like to know more about my campaign against bullying, please visit www.donnajodham.com and go to my page on bullying. Now it's time for our wrap up and I'll catch you on the other side. Thank you for having taken another five. We wish you a fantastic day. Hey, it's Donna Jill Jodhan, and we're at the end of our podcast. Take another five for this week. Another week is in the books, but before we leave you, we're going to have to give you some revelations for Fisherman's Feast, the mystery for this week. The murder had been planned, and it had been planned extremely well. The murderer knew that each year Marley had taken his sons on an annual fishing trip to the fisherman's feast lodge. He also knew that he would more than likely receive an invitation to join Marley and the boys. As an experienced fisherman, he knew that if fish bait was scattered in the water, it would attract all kinds of fishing or fish, including sharks. The murderer had bided his time, and when the boat was turning for shore, he struck. He got his chance while everyone else was busy with various tasks. First, he had invited Marty to go for a last-minute swim and hung back as Marty dove into the water. He then quickly pulled the bait out of the boat's freezer. Then he carefully spread it around the boat. He watched as the fish began to slowly circle around and an un unsuspecting and swimming Marty. Then he had called for help. It was too late by then. The sharks had done the rest for him. Marty was totally un unsuspecting of what was going on. He just went out there and just went for his last swim and didn't even think about it. Right then, we'd like to wish you a terrific day and a, an even better week for your week ahead. We hope you enjoyed this week's podcast take another five and we invite you to follow us at accessible world a c c e s s i b l e w o r l d or at author underscore jodhan a u t h o r underscore j o d h a n all on twitter or you can like us on Facebook at Author Donna Jodhan or Author uh, or Donna Jodhan. I'm sorry. And again, send us your feedback at info at sterlingcreations.ca. That's it for this week, folks. Keep a song in your heart and may the winds be at your back. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.